Now Professor Gerard van der Host is going to talk with us about his experience over the last 30 years with the CASA system. Hello. Uh, I'm, ju uh, I'm just going to share with you some uh, uh, very interesting uh, experiences over the last uh, 30 years of CASA. I was fortunate to work in this field since my very early days as a scientist. Um, and uh, I will never forget what is the factor that most influenced me. Uh, in the, in the um, uh, late 1980s, uh, rather late 1970s and early 1980s, I had the opportunity to work with uh, Dr. Hector Dot for a postdoctoral uh, at, uh, at Cambridge. And um, you know, Hector and I worked with uh, fish sperm, and we could s uh, score the percentage mortality of fish sperm after a while easily within 5% of each other, subjectively using a 1 to 5 point scale. But then I would go away for two weeks and come back. And then we will be very far out. And it, and, and it just again emphasizes the really subjective element. And, and, and uh, that also happens with human sperm morphology assessment. People have all these really great courses. Um, they score within 5% of each other. They go away and after three months, it is different. So it is really a problem. And so there is a need to really quantify. If we want to be serious, to be able to analyze a semen sample and really add a value to it in terms of sperm concentration or the percentage normal morphology or the percentage progressive motile sperm, we need quantification. I was fortunate to have one of the very first uh, CASA systems uh, at the stage when a whole range of companies were developing in the late 80s, early 90s. And um, these systems were extremely useful, uh, particularly as research instruments measuring human sperm uh, motility. And um, uh, many publications appeared, and many of these are still valid studies today, but um, there was always a big fear as to how accurate are these systems really in terms of sperm concentration, in terms of sperm morphology, in percentage motile sperm in semen, for clinical purposes, for human semen. And so, yes, what has happened uh, in the period since the middle 1990s, when many of these systems were really developing extremely well? Well, it's now, um, as I've indicated, almost a period of 20 years that vast developments have occurred. Let us take, for example, in the case of the sperm class analyzer. Let us take the, uh, the issue of um, uh, sperm detection. Because, you know, that is the most important factor, after all, in CASA, is how accurately a system can detect, and not only detect something as a sperm, but whether it's motile or not, and then, of course, the different grades of motility. Now, all the CASA systems in the world have, are using negative phase contrast, except for SCA, uh, for human sperm. Here, we use positive phase contrast, and the advantage is, uh, and this is one of the to my mind, one of the greatest breakthroughs in CASA in the last 15 years, uh, that you can actually follow human sperm, accurately detect them, because they are appearing as white objects, while the background, particularly the, 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 the prostatic secretions, are now black granules. And so they will not be detected. What happens if the sample is really filthy in the background? This has been a huge development in the last 15 years. Uh, in terms of cost and streamlining it and making it clinically more adequate and viable is the built-in filters that would detect whether a sperm cell has a tail. If the sample is very mucky, is very dirty, then for example we can um, <clears throat> of course use advanced analysis features where the background is made black and we only see the sperm as snow white particles against the pitch black background. If that doesn't work, yes, there is still an outcome, and that is to use it in the fluorescent mode. And um, in many instances, uh, this, this can be done, and you can work perfectly with this, even if the medium, uh, I mean, even if the seminal plasma is really dirty and really contain a lot of background noise. Because for image analysis, you, want a perf you actually want quite a clean background, ideally. So, these facets are really, really crucial. What were further new developments in the last, uh, 
10, 15 years. Now, traditional CASA systems have really kept on just measuring sperm concentration, sperm motility, sperm morphology. But what is new? Well, Microptic added a new dimension by introducing the sperm blue stain, and the advantage of this is that it produces a very, very clean background, and so much better thresholding and analysis of spermatozoa can be done. And they have also determined the cutoff points for normal very, very well. And what is great about this is you can select whether you want to use both either WHO or so forth, Tigerberg, strict criteria. So that is a nice addition. What is further additions? That there are other modules which the other system, most of the other systems don't have. And that is, for example, it has modules on uh, fragmentation, it has modules on vitality, and um, uh, uh, this can now also be done totally, totally uh, <clears throat> objectively with no human, I am wondering whether this is correct. And we must agree that by trying to quantify all these things better, as I've indicated, these are the developments of the last 15, 20 years, the sperm concentration, sperm motility, sperm detection, and adding these no new modules have made a really huge difference. The one facet that I need to add here is we must be careful just to use these parameters as predictors of fertility. It may not necessarily be. And so what is the best to do is to do sperm functional tests. And these are now all incorporated in a sperm class analyzer. And I want just to allude to two of these. And the one is, of course, the very important feature that you directly now can measure sperm cervical mucus penetration. That is the first big barrier sperm need to cross. They need to cross that barrier and we have the cutoff points for CASA in terms of kinematic parameters for telling us whether it will be successful to penetrate the cervical mucus. That is a really useful addition and it can be done in the seminal plasma because a male sperm is now challenged by his own seminal plasma, which has approximately the same viscosity as the, that of cervical mucus. And as you know, it's difficult to obtain consistent good cervical mucus, and even artificial media produce problems. So that is a useful adjunct. But even more is the adjunct of the test of hyperactivation. And if you perform then hyperactivation, usually with, uh, with a stimulant such as caffeine or pentoxifilin or even lignocaine or procaine hydrochloride, uh, you challenge the sperm, you force the sperm to undergo hyperactivation. And if a sperm doesn't have all these uh, necessary receptors, uh, it will of course not undergo hyperactivation. So these are very useful additional tests to measure hyperactivation to tell us about the functionality of spermatozoa. This is of more value to my mind than many of the routine parameters that we are measuring. But please, despite all what I've said here, take caution, and really big caution, to follow protocols accurately. It doesn't help you don't use a positive displacement pipette um, for aspirating sperm for sperm concentration. You can be 30% out because a lot of the sperm may stick in the typical negative displacement pipettes, which most people use wrongly. So I beg you, use positive displacement pipettes. Use the correct chambers. And, and these are really so important because otherwise we defeat the purpose of CASA. The purpose of CASA is super sophisticated technology to accurately and objectively measure these really important characteristics of spermatozoa. And if we don't uh, do it correctly, and we don't observe temperature in a temperature stage, and a positive displacement pipette, and the correct temperature, we can just as well not use it and carry on with uh, subjective methods, which is in any way not going to tell us anything. We have found over and over again that CASA is more consistent at manual evaluation and we have found 
that it is really the tool for the future. And where I go around, these you've asked for my experiences, where I go around in the world, people have replaced, um, fast replacing manual methodology with CASA. People that's not going to have this technology in five years will be so far behind because there are continuous new developments as in um, my crop team. So what I'm saying then is if there is not replacement of these subjective techniques by CASA, if there is not proper observation of the correct protocols and the correct methods to follow, well, then you will still struggle. I found uh, somebody that's poor with manual evaluation will actually be poor with CASA evaluation too because they won't observe all the protocols. So I hope uh, this is a feeling, gives you a feeling that for the kind of developments that have taken place in the last 30 years in my own experience, and I think the future is very bright, uh, particularly using such competent and excellent systems as the SCA sperm class analyzer. It is not a clinical black box anymore. Please take my word for it. Thank you. Thank you very much.